Hello everyone, nice to see you all. Thank you for coming. As announced, this is a practical guide to SIG release tooling for Kubernetes subprojects. I am Marko Mudrinic. I am a senior software engineer at Kubernetes. I am also a teaching associate at University Union in Serbia, teaching cloud native and Kubernetes and all that stuff. And some of you might know me as a Kubernetes release manager and contributor to SIG, CADS, Infra and some others. So, a quick disclaimer before we start is that this is not a deep dive. It might seem so at some point, but the plan is that we try to do a high-level overview of many tools, as many as possible. You might ask for the beginning, like, how are the Kubernetes releases created? And, like, what we do exactly there? And the core Kubernetes speaking of Kubernetes slash Kubernetes releases, are creating using CREL, and it stands for the Kubernetes Release Toolbox. While to some degree, CREL only supports cutting the core Kubernetes releases, there's a reason why is it a toolbox, right? CREL utilizes many different components that are to some degree standalone, and that you can also use in your projects, and we are going to see how to do that today. Before we start, so what is like our mission, vision, and values? And like in an interesting way, is that we want to create a tooling that can be used by every Kubernetes subproject to do releases. Like you can take the tools from the places where they are, put them in like CI CD pipeline for you, and have the magic happen. And why we do that? What's our vision? Is to make releases reliable, safe, secure and trustworthy, and we are doing some, let's say, a lot of jobs to make that happen. And speaking of values, like, we want everything to be transparent. Everything that you do, we do is SIG release. We try to make it, like, follow it by proposals that you can review, that you can take a look, that you can provide feedback. We are trying to be as open as possible. Even if you're not a release manager, if you're not a uh, contributed before that to SIG release. Everyone is welcome. You can join our meetings. We will find something for you. You can provide feedback. You can work on something. Like, we welcome everyone. And as a final one is that we really pay attention to reusability and modularity. We are going to see about that today. Like, we want to make sure that everything we make is, if possible, make it possible to use it for every project out there but at least for the Kubernetes sub-project, if that's not possible. And I left a link to our charter, which describes that in a little bit more of a detail. About a 10,000 feet overview of what we are going to see today is I'm going to start about how to host artifacts for your project's releases. Speaking of container images, binaries and torvals, and Debian and RPM packages. And then we are going to see how to enrich your project releases with tools like release notes, bomb, telehold, sidegaze, and similar tools. And let's start about how to host artifacts for your releases. So every release needs some artifact, so users can use that release after all. Yeah, that might be said by me, maybe not, I don't know. But there's a little problem over there that we want to make people aware is that serving artifacts cost a bunch of money and we need to be careful about it. And uh, we need help from cloud providers and infrastructure providers and we need to be creative about how we host and serve our artifacts and shout out to all of them for who helped us all these years to make everything that we host available to all our users. And you might ask, but there are many free services, and we need to be super careful about that, because those free services can be go away at any time. They often have limitations like rate limits, and we need to pay attention to stuff being secure and trustworthy, and sometimes it might not be super easy with free services. And Sigurlis and CK and Sinfra are providing both guidance and tooling and infrastructure that you can efficiently publish releases and your artifacts. So let's start for container images. And you probably know about registry cat as IO as the Kubernetes registry for all the images. But what is the interesting fact here is that it is in fact available to any sub project out there. And you can just submit a request 
to get the repository there. And this is actually the recommended way to host your images for your projects. And basically, you have a doc here that explains it. It's really simple as like submitting a PR with some information, having CK, Sinfra approve your request and reconcile it, adding relevant benefits, and enable automatic image builds. We are not going to speak much about those phrase. It's very well described in the document. But the last one tends to make some trouble for projects getting on board. So I'm going to explain it about how it all works. First of all, all images are first published to a staging repository, which is a kind of a temporary repository. Then images are basically built and published via Google Cloud Build. So this is a very important point is that that's the only way to do that stuff. Like you have to use Google Cloud Build. There's no other way. You just add cloudbuild.yaml to the root of your project's repository. And then you add the post submit jobs that's going to trigger the Google Cloud build when you do a release. And this is how it looks like. It's very basic. So you basically just instruct Google Cloud build what to run on your project to build the images and to push them. And this is basically the job that runs when you trigger a release, for example, if you want to each push to main or to release branches or stuff like that. And there is like a special hint here that this job must live in a specific place, which is like config jobs, image pushing. And what's another important thing to do is that after you push your image to the staging repository, is that you need to promote it. And this is where we have some pretty handy tool, which is called kpromo. And this is a very important step, because if you don't do that, images are not going to be available to users. And this is often forgotten by projects, ending up in a situation that users see your release on GitHub, they want to use the release, and end up in the problem that image is not available, but it should be there. And it's often because image promotion was forgotten. And how that all works is that registry SIO is replicated across many locations and regions to save on bandwidth as much as possible because it's super expensive. And it turns out that storage is not that expensive. And we don't really want to ask maintainers to push to all locations that we have registered so IO on. So we have the image promotion process. Like, what you do is you take the KTS, KTS IO repository, you fork it, you install the KPromo tool that we have, you export the GitHub token, and you do like this command here which is like kpromo PR, you provide like, what's your project that you got from the CK Sinfra to push your images to? You provide the tag, and it's going to create a PR for you that you just need to hold cancel, get it approved, merged, and after that, your image will be public to the users. You just need to make sure to watch the correct job. It's post IO image promo job on prow.kts.io. There is like, Asterisk here about successful. The job might flake, especially when it comes to replicating signatures. We are aware of that, and we are working on fixing it. And after the job is done, your image is available to users on registerkts.io. And now, this is like about container images. Now let's talk a little bit about binaries and torballs. And I actually don't have a lot to talk about it. So at this time, we strongly recommend that the Kubernetes sub-projects use GitHub releases to host the binaries, torballs, and files. It is, there are many reasons for that, but this is the recommended way at the moment. And we also have the LCAT as IO, and it is backed by Fastly CDN. And thanks a lot to them for the generous donation and support from them. But it's not really easy to get stuff on the LKTS IO for sub projects, so it's recommended to use GitHub releases. But if that doesn't work for you, you can reach to see Kate's infra and they can see what they're going to do, but that's mostly on case by case basis. We will figure out something. And now we are down to Debian and RPM packages. So, as of August 2023, not so long ago, 
we provide an option for the Kubernetes sub projects to host Debian and RPM packages at packages.kts.io. Before, this has been strictly limited to the core Kubernetes releases when we use the Google repos, but now we have this possibility and we are opening that to all the sub projects. The way that packages KTS.io works is that it's powered by donations from OpenSUSE and AVS. Packages are built, signed, and published by OpenSUSE's OpenBuild service, shortly for OBS. Not the one for recording and streaming, but this is another OBS. And they're hosted on AVS, which could be changed, so depend, you don't, don't really depend that much on it, but it is that way right now. And this is how it looks like the OBS platform, right? So you have your project that you get, you have some packages and you have some builds. It's pretty much nice, but you don't really have to interact a lot with it. And there is a catch though. We are not really happy about it, but we don't have a formalized process for requesting packages and package repositories for your projects. But that shouldn't be a roadblock here because you can just reach out to us to release managers like SIG release or release management on Slack and we will make sure to set up, set you up for success and like to give you the repositories, to give you the instructions and to help you get everything running. And this is a little bit about how you can do that. So you can just take the spec files from us. We have the QR code and link here with that is pointing like kubectl once and kubelets once are one that I recommend taking a look into. And one thing that I will just point out here for folks that are interested is that we build only RPM specs that are automatically converted to Debian specs thanks to some super awesome tooling that we have in OBS. And we don't build binaries from sources inside OBS but instead consume pre-built artifacts. So there's lots of curl. And that's actually the recommended way because it's easier to maintain your pipeline and to ensure that you have it consistent everywhere. And also you can publish pretty much any package, any type of package that is supported in OBS. We talk about Debian and RPM here because that's what we use so far. But if there's anything else on OBS that would work for you, please let us know when we can give it a try. And how it works with our tooling, so what you would do to publish packages once you have repositories, this is an inspection where you would use CREL for your project, you would do like OBS stage, provide the packages, version, project that you got from us, template here with the specs file, and like that would trigger building the package. After that is done, you can make the packages available to your users by using CREL OBS release and provide the package name and project name. And that's, you basically don't interact with OBS at all. You just use CREL in your CI CD. It can be PROW, for example. You just run those command and that's all you need to do. Nothing to fiddle with OBS. It's super simple and yeah, that's the way it works. And now we are to the part about enriching your releases. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe a little known fact, or maybe it's a very well known fact, I don't know. But Kubernetes SIG release maintains a lot of tools. And it's like a lot. And I would like to highlight some of them. And the first one be KPromo, which we have seen before. The release notes tool, the Zeitgeist, Bomb, Telohote and a bit more of them. And I'm again pointing to SIG release charter because it's like a nice place that you have all of our sub projects and projects that we maintain and that you can see and use eventually. And I would like to start from the first tool and this is release notes because it is one of my favorite tools in fact. So what is it doing? It's a tool that parses PR descriptions. So your PR description here and collects release notes from a special release node block in the PR description, right? So you create, you put this release node block, it must start with those back ticks and release node, and you put something here, right? And then you might ask, but why? We have 
GitHub has its own automation as of recently, and you can generate nicer looking release notes. There's a little bit of a problem there, is that GitHub PR titles and commit titles are not sufficient for change of entries for many reasons. First, you're limited in terms of length, like, for example, 72 characters or something like that, and that's often not enough. And PR titles often focus on code changes, not on user impact. Sometimes you want to highlight something especially for users. And there's also that some PRs might require multiple change of entries, which is hard to do that via PR title or commit message. And we actually solve that with the release nodes, for you have the special syntax like you can use none if you don't want to include your PR, for example, you did some insignificant update, there is no reason to include it, it doesn't provide value for users to include it, so you would just put none in the release nodes block, or you can put, for example, action required to, you know, in the Kubernetes change log that you must, like your jet action upgrade nodes, you must really look at this, this is how you get it with action required. And there is, in fact, no other formal syntax than this to make it simple. Like, we really want to use release nodes as simple as possible. And it also has some pretty nice other functionality, like the maps functionality that I also pretty like, is that you can override release nodes, provide the JSON files, and say, like, this is the PR number, and this is the message, and you have, like, keep track of it if you you're not, let's say, maybe not happy with the release note in the PR and you can't edit it, or you want to like, you know, do some editorial work and make it look better, you can use the maps functionality to override some of them. And this is a project that can be used on any project on GitHub as long as it uses the release node block. So it's not just the, to be used by Kubernetes and its sub-projects, it's really, in fact, the any project on GitHub. And how you do with it, it's very simple, is that you do like install the tool, do the release node generate, provide information, and you get the file with release nodes. And then we have the next tool, which is like the Zeitgeist, is a language agnostic dependency checker that keeps track of external dependencies. So let's keep it simple, is that if you have one same dependency that's used across many different places, like in Go code, YAML manifest, JSON manifest, how to make sure the version is consistent across all those places. You can define them using this tool. And it also has some additional use cases like that it can also check for the latest version on upstreams like GitHub, GitLab, Helm, but Kubernetes uses it mostly for the static validation purposes. So you basically have the CNI version, you provide it here, and you provide all the files that it's appearing, and then you just do like the validate command, and if you don't get anything, it matches everywhere, you're good to go. If you have a mismatch in any of those files, for example, you forgot to update it, this is going to fail, and you know that you're going to fix it. And some of another tools that we have is like BOM, which lets you create, view, and transform software bills of materials, which is still a pretty hot topic. And it has been used for creating asmos for the Cure Kubernetes releases. It's still being used. And it works for container images, for Go projects, and files on upstream. And it works and supports with tag-based SPDEX format. And how do you use it? It's very simple. Like, simplicity is one of our values as well, is that you just do bomb generate with dot, and it, like, generates the asmob for you based on your current working directory. Or you can use, for example, from the image, like for Cube API server example here, or you can also provide manually files to be included in the asmob. And you just run the command, you get the asmob, and you can also use it to visualize Asbom, which is pretty useful, with a document outline command, and to see what's actually in the resulting Asbom. Or if you want to like to see how to use it, what's there, yeah, you can use the bomb command. And there is one more tool that I would like to highlight, which is also pretty aws awesome, is Telohote. And there is an of official definition of it, but we don't have a lot of time. But in short, 
it works in a way that you can give it your build information. It will observe your build. It gives you information about each build step and what artifacts were created, where they're stored, what about uh, checksums and all stuff. You're going eventually to sign that file and provide it with a project. And it's like attestation of what happened in your build process. And it's going to provide you a JSON-based int auto attestation. I hope I didn't get that wrong. But yeah. And like this is from the readme. You just like provide it. It works with Google Cloud Build and GitHub Actions, and we plan to support Pro at some point. And finally, you might ask now, how do you I use this if I don't use Pro, but something like GitHub Actions? We have release actions tool, or action, and it is at this link here. It provides all of these tools that we mentioned now to be used in the GitHub Actions, and then you can use stuff like BOM as simple as this screenshot. And do we have time for questions? Uh, not really. <laughs> not really. OK, but you can find me on Slack, Xmodri, and you can reach out on SIG release channels and release management channels on Slack, and we can talk about anything. Thank you for your attention.